Um, if God exists and he has this particular character or nature, then that just is the case. It just is the case because it is the case. It's a brute contingency. All right. The universe or the material world exists. This we know. Why does it exist? Well, it could be the case that the universe just exists just because it does. Unlike you, Goose, I don't actually assume that the universe had a causal beginning. I, I think that, that it's woefully inappropriate to extrapolate from our local experience of the world and apply that to the whole of reality without modification. Most people still struggle for, with the plot to Inception, so I would say that our intuitions about how things ought to be probably are not the best uh, method of adjudicating what should and shouldn't be the case about the world. Now, moving on from that, there is an issue here with the whole God's nature answer in principle, all right? Is it the case that honesty is conformant with the nature of God because honesty is good? Or is it the case that honesty conforms with God, or is God's nature good because honesty conforms with it? Which is it? Well, I would say that, I would say that honesty is good because God it is- conforms with God? God? Yeah. But also, so, they, like, so you're asking, like, if it, if honesty is good because it conforms <clears throat> to God rather than, like, well, God I don't is think good is, good is, is, is honesty good because think... it conforms to the nature of God, or is God's nature good because it is honest? Well, yeah, I, well I it, it'd be the first one. It'd be honesty would be good uh, okay. because God. So, what you're saying at that point is that anything which, by definition, conforms to the nature of God is good. So, when you say that God Himself is good, that's meaningless. You're just saying that God is Himself. That doesn't imply anything to me or you about how God would or wouldn't behave. Because if something is conformant well, to his nature, like then he's to... perfectly capable of doing it. Well, yeah, and so, like, whatever God does, it, it's in it's in cor accordance with his nature. Okay, whatever he sure. says, now, ignoring the massive thing. moral problems with that in application, let's talk about the fact of the matter, all right? So we've, we've identified that you, you define good based on those characteristics or attributes which are conformant to the nature of God. Now, assuming... I believe you had some reliable mechanism for elucidating what is and in fact, what is or is not in fact conformant to the nature of God. The question of why are these things conformant to the nature of God is the next step. Why is God's nature one of honesty as opposed to dishonesty? There isn't an account for that. There can't be because that would force you to adjust your definition of goodness. The moment that you tell me that God's nature is honest because X, Y, Z, well, now God's nature is no longer your moral standard. X, Y, Z is. You just pushed it back. And then I can ask the same question. Okay. Yeah, it's Why is X, Y, Z honest as opposed to dishonest? And again, you can't give an answer for that because the moment that you do, you just push it back another step. It's either an infinite regress or a brute contingency. So in yeah, both my, my, cases, you are left with something just being the way that it is just because it is. And if you're satisfied with that explanation for God... I don't know why I can't be satisfied with that explanation for the natural world. Yeah, can I? Yeah. I well, mean, yeah, you can, you can have that kind of thing. You can have that perception. It doesn't make yeah. it, like, you know, correct, but it's just mm. what it is. Well, there's no I mean, way of identifying what, the truth what it of the matter is. here. That's the point. I, I, I hope I've been... Uh, I, don't, I don't see... I think God is... Well, that's the thing. I, I believe that God is above nature. I believe that he is... Beyond. Okay, I don't I, I don't engage in those sorts of silly yeah, prepositionals because they don't imply anything to me. There's no way of like extrapolating useful information when you're appealing to a standard that by definition doesn't operate the way that the universe does or that nature does. Yeah. How am I supposed to infer anything about the uniformity of nature if you're telling me that the source of the uniformity of nature is itself not natural? That makes no sense. How am I supposed to have a consistent worldview that way? I can't. That's absurd. In reality, your belief is that God is in fact the most natural, that he is the default state of nature, the most natural default state of existence. Everything else is contrived. The universe, human beings, planets, organisms, all of that is an artifice that was made up at the whim of this being. And so if you're asking me why I don't expect that the world should operate in some random or incoherent way in naturalism, well, unlike your worldview, there's nothing in my worldview that would make it do that. That's just silly. Okay. Can I interject? Go ahead. Okay, yeah, so when you say, sorry, when we're talking about, you, you're saying the most natural thing, God would be the most natural thing. Sorry, when, I, when I'm talking about the natural world, I'm talking about the material world. That's why I wouldn't say God is natural. Like he well, that's technically, just yes, picking we are not talking semantics. about materialism. Yes, sure. God is the most natural being because he just, he, you know, there's nothing created him, nothing, you know, he exists. 
Um, just because he does. You know, yeah. And the, and so, yeah, sure. I would say natural in that sense, but yeah, I, I would say like, I mean, if you go into infinite regress, when it comes to your, the, your scenario there, you're not going to end up justifying your first statement that you, you made. And that's why we're forced to go into um, justifying what statement. Oh, about God's goodness about is, you know, we are going into good and you're talking about it would go into infinite regress. Yeah. Like I, I agree, like infinite regress, you're not going to be able to justify it. If we're never, you know, right. It's either so, an infinite regress or a brute contingency. And since you guys seem to be satisfied with a brute contingency, all I'm doing is taking that satisfaction and applying it to a different outcome. If a brute contingency is good for thee, but not for me, that's just you being intellectually hypocritical. Yeah. And so that's the thing. We both have these, I get these circular, um, I suppose, argument. I don't know if it's an argument, but we're, we're both in a circular, like we have our worldviews okay. and we both end in a circle, right? So how do we reconcile? Like, how do we fight this out? Like, how do Parsimony. we justify the circle, right? Parsimony. Like, how do we do? Hmm? Parsimony. That's how you figure out which is more, most likely correct. So what we have My, here is the problem of under determinism. You have God created the universe and God just is the way that he is. And he just created the universe the way that it is because he is the way that he is. Right? Completely random. There's no account for why God is the way that he is other than he just is that way. All right. And then on the other side, you have the universe just exists just because it does. And the universe just is the way that it is just because it is. But of those two possible explanations, only one of them has a guaranteed standard. Mine. Because we know the universe exists. This is a fact. You have to add in the additional variable of God, which doesn't actually do anything to explain the problems. Right? Why the universe is uniform as opposed to not uniform, or why the universe is logical as opposed to not logical, or why the universe exists as opposed to not existing, in both worldviews, reduces down to because it is that way. Either because God did it and he did it just because he did it, or because it happened just because it happened. Or it didn't happen at all, it just always has been that way just because it always has been that way. But regardless, you reduce to the brute contingency. I have the lesser assumed variables in my worldview. So when I'm comparing both worldviews, I see that God doesn't actually add anything to the, to the uh, explanations of the world. He doesn't verifiably explain anything, and there's no mechanism behind how he actually did it if he did do it, right? Saying God did it doesn't inform me of anything. I'm still left to the mystery. So that's how I, I, I delineate between the two worldviews. Which one's more reasonable? Well, obviously the one that doesn't incorporate more assumptions than the other.